In this video, we will see how to use Raptor to create flowcharts. So to do that, run Raptor. When you run it, you see two windows. One says Raptor in the title bar. And if you look at the other one, it says Master Console. In the Raptor window, you see a number of menu items such as file, edit, scale, and so on, which we will not worry about at this point. And just below that, you see a number of buttons that help you to save, start a new project, cut, paste, etc. It should be familiar to some of you. And below that, you see a set of symbols and to the right of it you see a pane with just two symbols start and end you will be creating your flowcharts in this area between the start and end symbols the idea is that you will be dragging or you will be using the symbols on the left side put them on here between the start and end symbols and then play with those. The result of running the flow charts would be in the master console. So here let us look at a program or let's look at the problem of adding two numbers that the user specifies. So to do that you need to read two numbers from the user. For that, you have to use the symbol called input. Input allows you to read input from the keyboard, from the user. So click on input. You can see that it has changed from blue to red. The lines around this parallelogram has changed from blue to red. Now click between start and end. Now you can see that a symbol has been inserted between start and end and it resembles the input symbol on the left side. Here you can type in stuff. For that you need to double click here. Once you double click that, you can enter a prompt. So when you run the flowchart, this prompt will be displayed. So you might want to ask the user to enter one number here. Remember that our problem is to get two numbers from the user, add the two numbers, and print out the result. So you want to type in something like enter the first number. So in double quotes, I write enter the first number. And once this prompt is given, the user should be able to enter a number like say 4 and that number has to be captured in what is called a variable. A variable holds a value and that value can change from time to time. So you can see that uh, here it says enter variable here and says examples, coins or board 3,3. So, you can enter a variable such as number 1. So, number 1 will store the number that the user enters first. Click done. And it says, ask me to save the flowchart. So, for that I am going to say add numbers. That is the name of my flowchart. So click done. Now I need to accept the second number. The second number has to be accepted after the first number is accepted, obviously. So it has to occur after the first box. This box is the one that accepts the first number. So the second number has to be accepted after that. So you need one more input and it has to come immediately after the first. 
So you click between these two. Now, you, just as we did for the first input, you can double click here and then say, enter the second number. And then accept the second number into a second variable, which I am going to call number two and click done. So you can see that we have between the start and the end symbols two symbols. The first one says enter first number and you can see that it says get number one. So the idea is that when the flowchart is run, it will display enter the first number, wait for the user to type in a number and hit the enter key and that number, whatever it is entered, like four or five or whatever, will be stored into this variable called number one. Then the flowchart will um, execute the second symbol here, which would be enter the second number. The second number will be entered by the user and will be captured into the second variable called number two. Now our task is to add these two numbers. They are stored in variables number one and number two. They must be added and stored in a third variable, which I am going to call number three. So number three should be the sum of the values in number one and number two. How to do that? We are not reading anything from the keyboard. We are actually going to use the values that we already have. So for that, we go here to this assignment symbol. You can see that this symbol is called assignment. Click on that and you have to do this assignment immediately after the second number has been accepted. So click between the second number and end and you get a box for assigning to number three the sum of number one and number two. So double click on this symbol. Now you can see that it says enter an assignment example, set coins to five or set count to count plus one, etc. So you need to set a new variable, which I am going to call, as I said before, number three. And its value should be set number three to the sum of number one and number two, which is expressed as number one plus number two. Click done. We are not quite done yet. We have added the values of number one and number two, stored the result in number three. But this has to be displayed on the screen. So we need another symbol called output. So click on output, which allows you to display values within variables in the program. And like before, click between two symbols here. We have to do this as the very last step before end. So click here and double click. Now you can see some examples such as exact text, coins, number of coins, plus coins. So look at this third example here. What does it say? Number of coins is between double quotes, which means this exact string will be printed. It will print number of coins. and after that, you can see a plus symbol, which means concatenation. That is, after printing number of coins, it will attach to that string whatever is in this variable called coins. And what I would like to do is something like the sum of the values in number one and number two is equal to number three. So I want to display the sum of I want that exact string to be displayed, the sum of. I want to attach to that. At this point, I want to say what the value in number one is. So number one. 
then I need to concatenate. So put another plus and then I want to say and so that if number one is say the number four, this would say the sum of four, then the word and which should be followed by the value in number two. Then you might want to say is perhaps or equals if you wish. And then you want to display the result which is in number three. So what will happen here? This will print the sum of followed by the value in number one. So you'll see the sum of say four perhaps. Then you'll have and. So you'll see the sum of four and followed by number two, which is let's say five. So you'll see the sum of four and five followed by the word is. And number three would have been computed as number one plus number two, as you can see from here. So this would be nine. So you will get the result. The sum of four and five is nine, for example. So click done here and your flowchart is complete. You might want to save this again and run it. You can do it by clicking on the run button here. So click it. You can see that the flowchart is running. So it, uh, if you had noticed, it started with start. There was a green um, outline here. Now it has settled on the second symbol here. Enter first number. You can see that this is prompting. And you can enter the first number, let's say 4. Then click OK. Then it is now on the second or third symbol, rather. Here, enter second number, get number two. Let's enter five, click OK. It didn't stop at this point. Number three uh, is equal to number one plus number two. So this should have computed nine and stored nine into number three. And you can see that in the master console, it says the sum of four and five is nine. So that is coming from here. The sum of number one and number two is nine. So that is the end of uh, the execution. We get the result we want. And that is our first Raptor program.